This week we did stenciling, some more stenciling, and some thrifting. Lots of stenciling. And don't forget that we did some stenciling. We started out painting fabric. We did a few chairs and some pillows. This is one of the pillows that we didn't do, but I stenciled it at one point. It survived my house, so it's lasted. Yep, it's been going strong for a good while now. The two chairs that we did sold in the shop the same day within a few hours of putting them in there. So it's a really great option for an inexpensive way to upgrade drop cloth and turn it into upholstery fabric. Yeah, plus if you're doing it for your own home, none of your neighbors are gonna have that because you just can't go down to the store and get that. That's right, one of a kind. Waste Not Wednesday was fun. We worked on some trays and more stencils. Zeb actually had one tray that we didn't finish live because he needed to glue it together. This one. And I'm gonna show you how I glued this together and finished it up right now. We made a couple of farmhouse decor trays on our Waste Not Wednesday video that we do live. And we had some extra feet, but I've gotta fix this wood before I can put that on there. We're gonna glue it up. Right now I'm gonna trim the sides so that they're square, then we'll cut it to length and glue it, and it'll be ready for the steel wool and vinegar stain. Just has a few fibers holding it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and break those apart and put a liberal amount of glue on the broken spot. I couldn't find a little foam brush that I'd usually use for this. So I'm just using a piece of scrap wood to spread the glue out. And that's probably way too much glue, but I don't ever want it to come apart again. The board is out of the clamps. It's all nice and glued up. I've got a little bit of glue here on the bottom that I'm gonna clean up, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. I've got a steel wool and vinegar mixture. Just gonna get it so that the wood coloration matches the aged top with the sides here so that they're not all pink and white. So I'll go ahead and let this dry up, then we'll get the feet on it, and we may stencil it, we may not. Jamie was wanting to leave one natural. We already have two with stencils on. This little farmhouse tray ended up with this stencil. We just ditched the top of the Kroger part. You can use them all sorts of ways. You don't necessarily have to use the whole stencil every time. I like to take bits and pieces and create new looks depending on the piece that I'm working on and the space that I have to work with. After we got done doing lots of stenciling, we wound up doing a little bit of thrifting. Yeah, we went and did our regular thrifting. If you wanna see our full thrift haul, make sure you're watching our live videos that happen at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We had to get a little bit creative with the things that we thrifted and we're gonna show you how we take $8 worth of glassware that we thrifted and turn it into four cake plates. So these are always my favorite when people do this, but I love the scalloped edge on these plates. It's too cute with the dots. So some ice cream jars, some E6000, and we have cake plates and they're only a dollar each. So I feel like the price is right. Jimmy's trying to get a visual <laughs> right now. It's visual merchandising at its best. I had to make sure that like all the pieces work together, but I think that's really cute with a tear. It would be great for a dessert stand, at a baby shower or a wedding uh, shower, so I'm buying it. So when we went to the thrift store, I wasn't finding a lot of good stuff, so I thought I'd make some of my own good stuff. When I find plates that have interesting detail, I feel like this is a really easy way to upcycle them and make them into something fun and more valuable. So I'm using E6000, which is a adhesive that works with plastic and glass, super, super durable, takes a couple of hours to set up. When I'm looking for plates, I'm looking for a few things. This plate has a beaded detail, which is fun. Initially, what caught my eye were the smaller plates. They've got a beaded and scallop detail, which is way cute. And then I found one plate that has kind of this ribbed detail in the middle and then a fluted scalloped edge. And I absolutely love that. Kind of looks like a little bit of a pie crust. So Zeb is taking ice cream glasses, which we always find at the thrift store. There's usually a whole section. And I bought them in varying heights, especially for the pink ones. I've got three different heights. So that way when they're all put together, they're gonna add a little bit of visual interest. 
Make sure your plates are nice and clean and you're putting that E6000, Zeb's got it all the way around the rim and he's centering the ice cream dish. We're gonna let them dry with the ice cream dish upside down. That way the weight of the dish is holding the glue together. Aren't these Sunday cups? The Sunday cups, yes. The Sunday cup weight is holding it together. <laughs> Don't make the mistake of forgetting to take the price tag off underneath the plate when you glue the Sunday cup on. I'm not saying that I've ever done that, but you know, it's happened. So you're going to want to use E6000 in clear. It actually comes in clear and black, and it looks okay, I guess, if it was black on these, because maybe you wouldn't see it on the pink ones. I still wouldn't like it. But when you're working with clear glass that you're going to see the adhesive, you don't want black glue. I'm just using a damp rag on this clear one because you're going to be able to see it. And I'm just gonna clean up that edge a little bit. It's already starting to set up. Yeah, it sets up pretty quick, actually. You don't have a lot of time to work with it. I'm not even sure what it's gonna look like with this clear glue through the clear glass, but we'll find out. It'll look all right, put some muffins on it. Put some muffins on it. Everything looks better with blueberry muffins. So here's a few tips about gluing with E6000. In a couple of hours, you can move them if you need to. 24 hours till it's pretty dry, and it can take up to 72 hours for maximum adhesion. So keep that in mind with your projects that if you need them, like in a few days, you're gonna need to get them done. Don't wait till the last minute. Yeah, don't wait until the night before that wedding reception. Yeah, or people might be getting a treat. That's never good. <laughs> If you want to achieve similar looks to what we've done today, especially the JRV stencils, click that link below. You can get the products that we used in this week's video, including the JRV stencils, only available at jamierayvintage.com. We hope you guys enjoyed this week's little recap, and we've got a lot of fun projects coming up. We will have more news on the house, hopefully next week. The holiday threw everything off. The 4th of July has put a hold on the house process. We are now. very patiently waiting for full approval. So we're just telling you guys because people keep asking, we want to let you know. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, comment with any questions you have below on thrifting or our DIY projects, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Hit the subscribe button.